In September of last year, I built my own DIY solar power system. It's just three panels, but they are Trina Solar 400 watt panels, meaning that on a clear sunny day, I should be making 1.2 kilowatts. I built my own, admittedly janky, battery pack using LifePo 4 lithium iron phosphate prismatic 280 ampere cells for a total capacity of around 7 kilowatt hours. I've been making use of that power since, and I thought that I would give you a bit of an update on the system, and probably more importantly, how much power I've been generating, using, and how much money I've been saving. As a quick recap for my setup, like I said, I'm using three full-size solar panels rated for 400 watts each. They are all in series hooked up to a Renogy 60 amp MPPT charge controller that converts the around 110 volts or so from the solar panels to the 28 volts or so for the battery. And the MPPT part basically just means that it's rather efficient at doing that. That power gets dumped into my DIY battery pack via a 150 amp battery management system. I've also added a separate balance board as this Dali BMS isn't great. If I were doing this again, I wouldn't get one of these. Actually, I probably wouldn't build my own battery, but still, I wouldn't get one of those BMSs. That power then gets converted into alternating current via a pure sine wave inverter, specifically one rated for around 3 kilowatts, which works out to around 13 amps at 240 volts, which is the maximum that a single UK plug can carry. That runs from my shed into my house via an armoured cable and terminates with a Samsung SmartThings plug which records how much power I'm using, both as a total and instantaneously. Not all that much has changed about the system. I've added some flashing to the middle of the panels that are on their own frame to make them watertight, and I've added some insulation for the winter around the battery which helps a fair bit. And since the weather has been getting better, I've been adding more devices on and off to make use of that power that I'm generating. I found that over the course of a day, the parasitic draw from the charge controller, the BMS, the inverter especially, and things like the MQTT bridge that reports the data from the charge controller to Home Assistant, and the Wi-Fi range extender I have running in the shed to let the MQTT bridge actually connect, uh, all of that sort of stuff adds up to something like a kilowatt hour per day, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but if I keep that number as my go-to, I'm sort of comfortable knowing that I won't be running out of charge by accident. I've had Home Assistant recording data since basically when I installed the solar power system, and since then I've used about 300 kilowatt hours. The fridge is the thing that's plugged in pretty much 24-7, and over the winter I've been letting the washing machine and dishwasher use some of that power too, although as we get into summer, I'll actually be disconnecting them and focusing on using more constant loads like the 800 watt air conditioner that will be the only thing keeping me alive for like three months this year. Taking a look at the usage graph, you can see the spikes from the washing machine and dishwasher drawing around 2 kilowatts, at least for a few minutes at a time. Although, let me zoom in to the last day or so to give you a bit more of a look at a typical usage. To start the day off, you'll see that the fridge is turning on and off. It draws about 80 watts for 20 minutes per hour, and you can see that I get up at about 10am because my triple monitors switch on, drawing another 100 watts. Then at 2pm, I decide that it's been sunny enough outside to switch my UPS over. My UPS runs my main PC, my 24-core Threadripper Overkill NAS, and my little Quad Bay QNAP NAS as well. That brings the total to around 600 watts. We run the dishwasher at half 3, which momentarily spikes the usage up to 2.5 kilowatts, and then it's stable around 600 watts or so until around 9pm when I switch my UPS back to the grid. That adds up to about 6 kilowatt hours for the full day of energy, or about £2 saved at the current cost of electricity. Now, admittedly, that was a pretty sunny day. Looking at the panel power, you can see that for a good hour or two, it was generating 1.4 
kilowatts. Yes, higher than the rated spec. The charge controller reckons that it stored 5.3 kilowatt hours to the battery, which yes, means that we dipped into some of the existing stored energy to make use of all of that power, but I mean, that's what it's there for, right? Today wasn't nearly as sunny, so it's mostly been sort of off and charging. Over the winter, it really didn't generate all that much. The data here is a little incomplete because I actually switched the inverter off and therefore the Wi-Fi range extender as well, but we didn't use any of that power during that time either. This wasn't necessarily because none was generated, in fact in the three or so weeks that it was off, it actually filled up the battery completely even with the parasitic loss every day, but there were a few external reasons why we couldn't use the power, so that's that. But if we could have, we most certainly could have had the fridge running sort of full time, although probably only the fridge in total. Occasionally it did gather enough power to run things like the washing machine or dishwasher, but especially in the depths of winter, those days were pretty few and far between. I think the most interesting graph here is actually the Samsung SmartThings plug energy summation basically the total of how much energy I used over time. Now, the plug has a bit of a weird bug where it seems to reset the counter around every 100 kilowatt hours of usage, and I didn't capture the first 40 kilowatt hours of usage in the first couple weeks where it was still sort of autumn weather and quite sunny, but it's, I think what it's telling is how long it took for us to use 100 kilowatt hours over the winter versus how quickly we used the same amount of power in spring. The current jump, that you know, the, that little tick that you see at the bottom is even faster. If I include the first 40 kilowatt hours used in autumn, it took me about two months to use 100 kilowatt hours. Then another five or six months to use the next 100 kilowatt hours, and now it's more like 100 kilowatt hours per month. And that's only going to get shorter over summer. If I can use my 800 watt air conditioner for 12 hours a day using solar, I'll use nearly 300 kilowatt hours in a single month. That's basically a hundred pounds saved. As for how much I've saved so far, well I kind of just gave the game away. I've used about 300 kilowatt hours so far, which means that I've saved about a hundred pounds. That doesn't sound like all that much, and granted, compared to what I've still had to pay to the greedy corporation that supplies my grid power, it really isn't, but that's still not bad considering that was basically over winter, and it was off for about a month as well. Well, I'll be bringing you a full one year update in autumn, my projections land me about £500 a year of offset costs. That is probably a little optimistic, but I doubt that I'll be that far off, and since I spent around £3,000 on the system all in, that means that I'll start seeing a full return on investment within six years. That's not bad at all, and that's assuming that energy prices stay where they are for the whole time. We're expecting Ofcom to continue to fail to do their job of protecting consumers by allowing the energy price cap to rise again, meaning that prices will rise, which I guess means that my return on investment time will only decrease. Sadly, that also means that the remainder of my usage on the grid will also go up, so it's a bit of a bad trade, but still I'm very happy to have the system and I'm using the, the panels that are on their frame as well as a bit of a sort of sun shield or sunshade uh, and I actually now have a rowing machine under there as well which I'm really enjoying using. I overheat incredibly badly when exercising so having it outside especially in the cooler months helps a lot and the fact that it's sheltered on all sides means that I'm protected from the weather whether that's sun or rain. There is also something to be said for the small amount of self-reliance that we now have. You know, if the power were to go out for any reason, well we now have a way of generating some electricity. Sure, it's not enough to run the entire house on, but it's enough to, you know, keep the fridge cool, it's enough to, you know, run little appliances if we need. 
and that is quite a nice uh, sort of a bit of assurance to have as well. With that said though, that is a bit of an update on my sort of winter and spring usage from my solar power system. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you have solar, how has it been you know, over the winter for you? How much have you been saving? What's your expected ROI time if you're still you know, not already recouping from it? And what sort of system do you have? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Also, if you don't have any solar power, is this something that you consider trying yourself? Or is it something that you'd rather, you know, get a full proper on top of your house, cover the thing, run everything type of system, obviously a higher upfront cost, but potentially better return investment too. Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. If you haven't seen the rest of the solar videos, check them out on the end cards and check out the rest of my other projects and general tech reviews that are on the channel as well. If you want to stay up to date on the tech reviews that I do, the projects like the Open Source Response Time or this sort of solar project, uh, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to support my uh, unqualified idiocy, then feel free to use the links in the description. You can support through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of loans I designed myself or pick up things like an open source response time tool or some of the other affiliate links in the description that don't cost you anything extra to use but do help me out when you use them. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.